Hello, Daz Studio enthusiasts. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to my tutorial. First of all, I want to thank everyone for tuning in and checking out my tutorial series. I have to apologize a little bit today. I've been suffering from allergies, so I didn't get my normal tutorial time put in this week. So this video is coming a little bit later on a Friday than I normally do. And it's going to be a little bit shorter because I have lost my voice this week and it's been uh, kind of difficult. So I appreciate the time you're taking to watch my video. So this week, I thought I would address a question that I had from one of my viewers. I believe it's Jerry. And he asked, what do I do with uh, large scenes or scenes that have a lot of props or a lot of details, how do I get them into my scene and what do I do with all of those parts that are not being seen in my picture? Well, there are a couple of things we can do with this and uh, you may or may not know this already, but I wanna show you at least what I do when I'm dealing with a big scene. And I love big scenes, there are some props out there that just have some amazing details that you want your character to be walking through. So I thought I would just kind of show you at least how I set this up. Now I've got Milica, of course, because she's just so darn cute. We can't leave her out. And I just have her set up in the base position and she's actually in her base pose and everything. So I will first set up my character and anything that's around the character that I want in the scene before I load the large scene. So for example here, I have Milica set up, I've got her clothes the way I like it, and I'm going to run a simulation to get her into a pose that I want, and then once I get her into a pose, then I'm gonna add this huge set called the Streets of Venice. And this is a really cool set, but it's huge. And so what I want to do is basically keep my character centered and set everything up around her or around your characters, if you have more than one, and then move the scene around her rather than moving her around the scene. Uh, we do this for uh, several reasons. The first thing is it's really simple. If you keep your character at the 000 coordinates, you can add things really easily because that's where they pop up when you add you know, another prop to the scene. Secondly, if she gets way too far away from center, some weird things can happen with her skin textures, her eyes. So we wanna keep our character at this setting. Now I'm just gonna have her walking through the streets of Venice. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get her into some nice pose where it just looks like she's relaxing, maybe walking around a little bit. So let's get that done first. Okay, so I have her in a pose and now I'm just gonna run a simulation to get her clothes correct. So I'm doing this all before I load the big scene in makes it run faster, just makes it easier. Always deal with your character first, get her all set up, get her how you want, and then add stuff around her. Makes your life a whole lot easier. Okay, so I have her set up now, and this is the time when I'm gonna set up any of my spotlights and other cameras. So if I want another camera, I can add it in here and uh, perhaps, you know, maybe I'm gonna put it on the other side of her as she's walking, something like that. So set up all your cameras and your lighting before we do anything else. I already have some spotlights in here, so I'm just gonna adjust those and then run a test to make sure that my spotlights are in their correct place. Okay, so I have some spotlights set up. Let's go back to this original camera here. And let's just run a test, see what she looks like. 
how illuminated she is. And then we can make any adjustments that we want before we add any huge thing in. Remember, whenever you add a large set in, it's gonna slow everything down. That's why I try and get this done before I'm doing anything else. So that camera looks pretty good. Let's check out the other camera. All right, not bad at all. This is kind of a nice, sexy dress for her. Um, not too sure about the bottom though. It looks kind of weird like it's hanging down past where her feet are. So we can always adjust that kind of stuff a little bit later. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to that Streets of Venice set and I'm gonna add it into the scene. Now this Streets of Venice, you have a three delight and an eye ray. So obviously I really only work in eye ray. So I'm gonna add the eye ray version of this set and I'm just gonna add it in. It's gonna take a minute to load cause it's such a big set. And then we're gonna check out like where we wanna put Milica and everything like that. So she is somewhere in the scene and to figure out where she is, I'm gonna go to my perspective view and you know this perspective view unless you decide to render using that camera it never really renders it won't render with render cue and that kind of thing unless we select it so i'm just going to zoom out now i had to hit control l to get the lighting going but you can see in my perspective view this is a huge set and Milica, let's see if we can find her. She is kind of right in the middle. She's actually in the water right now. So what a way to um, check out Venice sitting out in the water. But you can see she's right here. And so what we should do perhaps, which would be kind of a cool picture is let's put her on this bridge. So there is a bridge and then lots of buildings that make up this set and the set itself the streets of venice i think i got it from daz studio it has some camera presets and it comes with a bunch of cameras so you notice when i loaded it in it's got all of these different cameras that are going to show different parts of the set so the second camera that's actually the bridge right there third camera one of the squares, fourth camera, uh, looks like the bridge as well. So we're actually gonna put her on the bridge. We can use these cameras if we want to, or we can set up our and use our own cameras. I tend to sometimes use the sets cameras, sometimes I don't, it just really depends. But you can see this is a huge set. So if I um, go back to my perspective view, it's just a nice big set. So what do we do to get this where we want to and set up so that it looks like Milica is doing something interesting in Venice. Now, what I have learned is that it's much easier to keep Milica in one position, click on the entire set and move the entire set. So see, I'm gonna move Milica onto the bridge, but I'm using the set to move. So my cameras, everything is staying where I want it, the spotlights, the cameras, and I'm moving this big set. Now I'm going to go back to that camera that I had chosen. I see Milica and she is now on the bridge. She is, isn't in the right position, but she's on that bridge now. So now I can easily just take her and rotate her so it looks like she's walking on the bridge. And I can adjust her a little bit and she's gonna be very close to those base coordinates. All right, so see that looks pretty good. And so let's just say for example, this is the scene I want to render. Now, I still need to do a few things like add a background, so let's do that because I can see right here we have a background that's just gray, so we don't want that. Okay, so now let's say this is what I want to render. Now, the big question that Jerry had was, what can I do? Because if I just render everything, all of that set, the whole Venice set, is going to play a role in my render. So what I can do 
to help speed this up is I can go to my perspective view. I can kind of orient the scene so that I know where the camera is pointing. So my camera is looking at Milika's right side. And so everything behind her right side is going to seem in the render. What's cool about this Venice is I can click on individual buildings and I can just hide them in the scene. Once they're hidden in the scene, they're still there so I can unhide them. But when I render, they won't be taking up any memory on the computer. This is gonna make your renders run much quicker if we can hide some of the scene. So everything in front of this camera isn't even going to be in the render, so I'm just gonna hide it. Now I can go back to my original camera and check. See, everything looks good. Now I do have to say, one thing that's really cool about a lot of these sets is, when I render this, we're gonna have this dead space. Well, you know, Venice, I don't know if you've ever been to Venice, but it is just a maze of streets and all the streets look the same, and you can get lost really easily in Venice. So for this particular scene, I can add a building behind Milica here, and it's gonna help with the set. Let's take this building, I just um, made it visible again. I can click on the building, go to Edit, Duplicate, Duplicate Node Hierarchies, uh, then I have a second building number nine, so it doesn't really matter. You can kind of scroll down until you find the second version of nine, which is right here, or I can just use the original. But I'm going to rotate that building around so that it's facing a nice direction, and I'm just going to move this extra building and kind of move it into that gap. Yeah, see now... There is a building in there. We can still see a little bit of sky. I mean, that's cool. But now we've got a building that's kind of blocking that area. So now we have the illusion that we have more city behind Milica. So I can go back to my perspective view, click on the original building number nine, and hide it. She is definitely floating. So we're gonna have to deal with that and then probably I will need to repose her clothes. So I'm gonna click on her. Let's put her down to the ground level. Just make sure she's at ground level. Probably be good to put some shoes on her. Venice streets are not the cleanest. She is a clean girl, so she needs some shoes. And like I said, I probably should rerun her simulation to get the clothing right so I'm gonna clear it out okay now you can see that's much better now that we have everything set up we should be able to render and the render shouldn't take so much time or space to get the job done through Daz Studio now what's really cool is if I want to have her walking let's say down the street all I have to do now is reposition the Venice buildings and just rotate them, move them, and then I can make my next render. My cameras will all be the same. Every spotlight will be the same as long as I'm moving the set instead of the character. So this is how I do this. See, if I want to move her off the bridge, zoom in here just a little bit, I can rotate my building and move her to a new location in the set. So see, now she's on this sidewalk. I can start adding in the buildings that I had invisible, and then she's ready to go for her next scene. I have done this several times when making a larger scene. Just to give you an example of this, I have a different scene here, and I have it kind of set up, and the characters, are walking through the scene. And this is exactly how I did it. I'm moving the scene. The, the characters are actually not moving at all. And I'm moving the scene so that it appears they're walking down the street. 
and this saves a lot of time and allows you to add anything else into the scene that you want to right at the base coordinates. Okay, so that's just an example of, of using this technique. So I'm gonna get the camera I want set up. Let's open this up. Let's do one quick preview and then let's render this. You know, that looks pretty good. She's got like a really cool copper kind of dress on. I like that. So this is definitely a daylight scene and um, it looks good. Let's get out of our iRay preview, go back to smooth shaded or texture shaded and let's go ahead and just render this up. I hope this helped you. I know this was a simple little tutorial, but you know, we sometimes overlook these really simple little techniques that can add a lot to our scene. I'm going to render this up and get this posted on YouTube. Hey, I've got a couple hours before it's midnight, so my Friday post streak will hopefully remain. It's just a little bit late. Until next time, take care. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a few comments. I really appreciate your patronage, and I will see you next time.